Tonight we're going to do macaroni stuffed meatloaf on the Traeger pellet smoker. So tonight we have a special treat for you guys and I'm not talking about this macaroni and cheese here that I've had in the fridge for a few hours now. We're going to be doing a meatloaf but not just any meatloaf. If you guys have seen our past recipes for meatloaf we typically use the blacksmith's meatloaf popularized by Jesse James the chopper builder but tonight we're going to throw a new twist on it and we're going to be taking this macaroni and cheese that I made earlier in the day today and I'm not going to bore you with how to make macaroni and cheese that's not what this show is all about but I will tell you it tastes really good and it's been in the fridge getting cold and I'll tell you why in a minute and one of the twists that we're doing with this meatloaf is we're doing half and half 80 20 ground beef with some bratwurst that we picked up from Costco I'm going to take the sausage out of the casing toss the casing away and mix up that sausage with that ground beef and then we're going to use a slightly modified mix of the usual ingredients and they are about a cup of any cheap spaghetti sauce will do in this case I got some garlic uh, type since I'm not putting as much meat in here usually it calls for four pounds of ground beef but since I'm going to be stuffing it with macaroni and cheese I'm only going to use three pounds of meat a small onion you're going to need some ketchup and I'll show you why in a little bit a teaspoon of cayenne a tablespoon of cracked red pepper a tablespoon of garlic salt a tablespoon of crushed ground black pepper and to top it off a tablespoon of Uncle Steve shake sweet and the spicy are now the usual recipe from Jesse James calls for using some Lowry seasoned salt but in this case I'm substituting with the Uncle Steve shake then you're gonna need some quick oats and a few cups will do usually it calls for four eggs I'm cutting that down to three and of course a box of in this case I use Kraft macaroni and cheese and I stuck to the instructions on the box but I ended up cooking them just a little bit al dente and, th and then cool them off in the fridge what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll that macaroni and cheese up into kind of a, a tube about the size of a hot dog or so and that's going to go inside the meatloaf and then to top everything off we're going to use some four cheese Mexican grated cheese and about a cup of that all right guys as I mentioned we got the about a pound and a half of this brats and uh, just under a pound and a half more like a pound and a third of 80 20 be sure to get 80 20 same rule applies here for smash burgers get yourself a uh, good quality 80 20 because uh, you want that little bit of fat in there cutting the casing open here look how easy that was okay I'm going to do the rest of these and we'll be back in a second I don't have a meat grinder it's already been through a meat grinder but just to kind of help mix it up I'm gonna kind of chop it up a little bit okay and I'm just gonna go ahead and throw it in there with that ground beef and I'm just gonna kind of help it out a little bit I'd recommend a slightly larger bowl and you know, this is the one I grabbed it's a little bit small but it's all right okay so I'm gonna put in those spices I'm going to put in that spaghetti sauce. We'll go ahead and crack three of these eggs. Sorry guys, I haven't learned how to do that one hand thing here. So, so. Then some of this uh, quick oats and the chopped small onion. And then get your hands in there guys. This is the part where you don't want to pussyfoot around here this is where you do the hand mixing I don't recommend you use the mixer you kind of want to get a feel for what your meatloaf is doing here All right now it's doing pretty good get a little bit more of them quick oats all right Sassy's gonna give me the helping hand here that's good okay the reason I'm adding more uh, 
quick oats that I normally do is, I think I put too much spaghetti sauce in there. I, I didn't cut back on that, even though I'm using a pound less of meat, but that's okay. Sausage might suck some of that up. Um, but this is looking really good. So essentially what you're trying to do is when you get to that point where it feels like you can make some nice meatballs, I'd say that's the consistency you want. Needs to be able to needs to be able to hold together and hold its shape shape uh, somewhat. But you know we're putting it in a meatloaf pan, uh, which is basically a bread pan, but it's got a little insert. So when you pull it out, it comes out pretty easily. Okay, so another surprise ingredient: some diced jalapeno, one large diced jalapeno. So we're gonna throw that in there for. A little bit of heat. We all like a little bit of heat, right? I'm just gonna mix that in really good. And then uh, Sassy's gonna grab me some of the shredded cheese. And yeah, we'll put, what, about a handful of that shredded cheese in there. Oh yeah, okay. So I know she likes cheese. Now this will help bind it together, that's okay. Um, yeah, how about that? Okay, so I'm gonna mix this up a little bit more and then we're gonna take the next step. All right, guys, so now the fun begins. Rolling the macaroni and cheese into the middle of this meatloaf. So let's let's do that. All right, guys, you can see I got some uh, saran wrap right here, okay? And um, I'm gonna use this to place the meat down here, but before I touch that raw meat, I'm gonna take out some of the macaroni and cheese and work it kind of into a size tube that I need. Now, I can't have this too much, too big, and uh, the plus is that I'm going to have some macaroni and cheese on the side once I reheat it. And um, now when you take a look at this pan, there's really, I don't know, about uh, seven or eight inches right there. And I don't want to go to the very end because I don't want all that cheese leaking out. So this has been in the fridge and I just took it out. And uh, that's probably about how much I'm going to use right there. Uh, Maybe a little bit more, okay, that ought to do it. Now the goal is to uh, roll this into the, uh, the meatloaf with, and seal up all the ends so you don't uh, have any of this macaroni and cheese running out here. So now I did that first so that I won't be touching this macaroni with uh, raw meat hands. So I'm gonna put this over here. Now I'm gonna take the meatloaf. I'm just gonna lay it out here. Okay, this should work nicely. There we go. Okay, very similar putting this together the uh, same way that you would do a barbecue fatty, more or less, uh, pretty close. Okay, so again, grabbing that meat pan, you can kind of see that size I'm looking for. Okay, right about like that, okay. So here we go with the macaroni and cheese. I'm going to start on, on one end here. Now you can see already how uh, you know, there's a lot of macaroni here. But uh, we're going to roll it up. Okay. I'm going to take off my gloves because they're sticking to the saran wrap. Here we go. And again, a little bit of macaroni and cheese coming out of the edges is okay. But for the most part, I want to really try to seal seal that up in there and toward the end you know I could take some meat and plug it up so there we go just like that when you need to just grab the saran wrap there we go bring it in nice and tight okay See the edges there? Just uh, squeeze it in. Okay. No problem. There we go. Okay, guys. Hope you can see that still. Okay, now, now the goal is to get this in the pan without it falling apart. go 
All right, now, every meatloaf, every meatloaf has to have that little valley right there. Okay, I can move this around normal again. There we go. And here's where the ketchup comes in. Fill that valley up, square it around the edges. Okay, trust me on this. This is what's gonna create that beautiful crust on the outside. Now, I've already gone out and started that trigger up, and it's going up to high on, on my particular little Tex. The high setting is uh, right around the 425 range. Really, ideally, if you can get this up to 450, even 465 for about an hour and a half, that's even better. But uh, we'll do just fine. A little bit more ketchup. There we go. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, let's go out to the trigger. For pellets today, we're going to be using some of these Pit Boss um, Mesquite Blend. Honestly, it's just what I had laying around. I got enough to finish off the uh, empty space in the hopper, and so that's what we're going to use. Okay, so I didn't uh, strain these out, uh, so I'm not going to use that little bit that's in the end, all that dust there. I'm just going to toss that out. So be careful uh, about pellets that start breaking up and uh, swelling up and attracting moisture. Uh, you want to store these in a, uh, on a cool, dry place inside your house. Airtight container is even better. And uh, before you use these, um, send them through an old colander or strainer and uh, only use the, uh, the hard, intact pellets. All right, guys, here we go. All right, guys, there we go. So if I had a timer to show you on my camera, I'd set it for 5.15 or an hour and a half from now. I'm not gonna stab it with a meat probe or anything like that. Honestly, I'm just gonna wait for about an hour and a half at this highest setting. And then if that internal temperature, just shy of the internal temperature is about 165, it's done. I don't wanna overcook that macaroni and cheese in the middle. That's why I made it al dente and I put it in there cold. It's kind of like a cream cheese filling. I don't wanna melt it all away. If you wouldn't mind at this point, please take a minute and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We really appreciate that you guys are taking time out of your day to watch some of our videos and we love it when you come around. Definitely hit me up in the comments section about your favorite meatloaf recipe. I want to hear about it. Okay, so for you folks that are taking notes and screen captures, I'm going to put the recipe right here. All right, so Hope you enjoy this. Um, I'm going to go have a cold brewski here while we wait, and uh, we'll see you in a little bit. great folks comment down below what is your favorite meatloaf recipe of all time is it your grandma's your grandpa's your mom's your friend your girlfriend wife husband leave a recipe down in the description this is great so guys please take a minute to subscribe to our channel we'd love it when you come by here spend a few minutes of your day watching videos and be sure to hit those notification settings so you don't miss a thing what do you think, baby? It looks good.